I got a bag of free popcorn here from the Lenore County Fair. No, I didn't steal it. He gave it to me. So there, don't judge me before you know the story. Dumbass. But anyways, 1998, September, I was moved into Coleman Drive's, the Coleman Drive Apartments by Foster, Vernon Foster. And let me tell you something, some of the most miserable memories come from that period of time. There's some good memories, yes, but some of the most miserable. I was really fat, really ugly. Okay, my paycheck. I got a little over $600 in SSI and disability benefits, food stamps, Medicaid, Medicare. But let me tell you something, brother. I could not save up for hair transplant surgery or any other cosmetic surgeries I wanted because after I paid my fucking bills, I had almost nothing. I just I had just enough to pay for the gas in my car. Every week I went to karaoke at the Underwaters Cafe in Greenville, North Carolina, Honkotanchi Street. Wednesday from eleven to two. I remember the bad, bad memories of all the girls who's on my measure back then. So many of them were longer than mine. Good looking girls. Such bad foot bad memories. Bad memories. That added, that compounded to the frustration and misery I felt back then. Well, I had, I was sick and tired. Okay, I had to pay $295 for rent, okay? Then I had to pay the electric bill, which was, you know, about less than $100. And I forgot, there was other bills. I can't exactly remember what they were insurance for my car I didn't have cable TV I couldn't afford cable TV and they were too lame to provide free cable those shoddy cardboard wall cardboard apartments one of the apartments flooded next door and the water seeped underneath my walls and flooded my apartment they tried to make me pay to clean it because it said it was my fault for having dirty shoes walking on the carpet. That's why I was mildewed and stumped. But anyways, I got sick and tired of living from paycheck to paycheck and having nothing to save. No money left over to save. So you know what I started doing? You know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what I continued doing? Because I first started stealing gas in the summer of 1998. When I really revved it up, I almost got busted for stealing from the right way in September of 98, right after I moved into the Cone Drive apartments. But I finally was able to go back and bust and burn them for $10 a few, about a year or so later. <laughs> so I had the last laugh. <laughs> but anyways, some of my escapades were I, okay, the, it's on Heritage Street. I think it was the Exxon Station. It's now a Hess, I think. Or a Kangaroo, I'm not sure. But across from the Piggly Wiggly supermarket and across from the Wachovia Bank on Heritage. Well, I went over there and I burnt them for almost a full tank of gas. But what I did was I had my I had a license plate. I was able to lift it up so you couldn't see my license as I drove off. So I, I would steal the gas, hung the pump up. I see I didn't know to leave the pump on the ground back then. And I drove off across the road and parked in the Piggly Wiggly parking lot and went inside because see, they're, if you steal gas, they're expecting you to haul ass and keep hauling ass. So they're gonna expect you to go. They're gonna expect to find you further down the road. I just went next door <laughs> to the Piggly Wiggly and as I was walking into the Piggly Wiggly there was this cop, his name was Guy. He was coming out and he was 
talking to the receiver. He was receiving a call. And I said, oh, hey, guy. He's like, hey, I'm too busy. I got, I got, I've just gotten a call. And you know what he got a call for? That gas station was calling in. That gas theft. <laughs> that just did. What was so funny was the cop, the culprit, me, was face to face with that cop. <laughs> he never knew the difference. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, from the same store. Some weeks later, I was at church. We were having a dinner on the grounds. And my gas tank was low. And it was bothering me. So, I got in my car. I was going to come back to the church because we were all at the church. Drove to that same gas station. It was broad fucking daylight. Pumped a tank full of gas, hauled ass, you know, lifted my license plate up, and rode, drove back to church. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one time, oh good God, back in June, July of 1998, I burnt, it was a, it was a gas station on Highway 258. You come off of Academy Heights Road. You come to the end of Academy Heights Road, take a right, and it's about not even a block on your right. It was they tore it down now, and you could ride. And this was when they you could ride the road down the Green Acres Trailer Park. How many of you all remember that? Good God, I burnt that store so many times. I bet you I burnt them seven, eight, nine, ten times, and they never wised up. One time. I pumped a tank full of gas at night there. I drove off. And normally I drove down the road to Green Acres Trailer Park. This time I went the other way. And as I was driving through the neighborhood, the back roads, I saw headlights. So I turned into a parking lot of a residence. Turned off my car, turned off the lights. And as I did, this sheriff's deputy passed behind me where I was parked going you know where <laughs> <laughs> you see y'all ain't gonna help me start a fundraiser so I can ma make the money honestly so I can get the cosmetic surgery so if you want something done you gotta do it your damn self and sometimes you gotta be shady cause when you're pissed poor you're not gonna win the fucking lottery don't hold your fucking breath but this right here is the store where I stole that fucking gas from. And I was face to face with the fucking cop who got the fucking call. And if he'd have only known, he could have fucking bust my ass right there. <laughs> Makes me feel good about myself. Until I'm a good looking guy. Until I'm happy with my longer arms. Looking young. Until I finally get something I want. I gotta take it from you. Because nobody's giving. Well, I take that back. I do got a lot of people who help me out. And I don't steal from individual people. Just businesses. Big business. They can handle it. They'll never miss it. They got lots of money. So who gives a fuck? I don't. Nor should you. So you see, when you put people on welfare, and attach absolutely zero responsibility to the package deal. You get people like me. You get people who steal. Who steal gas. You get people who steal bicycles from the store. You get people who will steal food from the grocery store. Because they complain they're not they're not getting enough money. You're never going to make it. They're always going to find an excuse as to why they're not getting enough money. Why they haven't got enough. My uncle, Mark, used to get on my case all the time about not having a job. But then, when he got on unemployment, his wife had to tell him to get a job. And he would talk to me, explain to me, Chris, I understand where you're coming from now. It does make a sorry person out of you. It does make you not want to work. 
So, now that he walked in my shoes, he wasn't so condemning of me anymore. But, well, for me, well, what it really boils down to is they're not really giving me what I truly, deeply need. More than housing, more than a roof over my head, more than food, more than Medicare, Medicaid. What I truly need is to be set free. I mean, you are looking at a prison. This body right here. The true me is inside, waiting to be set free, unshackled. And then I won't need your welfare or assistance program. I'll get it my damn self. I'll get a job because, hey, I'll have the strength in me to grab life by the tail and choke it. Now, how are you going to set me free? Make me into a good looking guy. Because in my mind, I, I'm the good looking guy with the long arms looking young. But when I look by, I'm in this prison. Kill this prison. Break down this wall. Society, tear down this wall so that the real me can shine forth. Turn me into a good looking guy with the longer arms using that Elizarov contraption. Make me look young again. Give me pulse electromagnetic field therapy. That's going to take a few hundred thousand dollars, so my PayPal account is wild underscore man underscore chris2000 at yahoo.com. And once I'm set free, once I'm the good looking guy with the longer arms and looking young, I'm willing to start out life again, dirt broke, because it won't take me no time to rise, it much long to rise up to the top once I got those good looks. But until then, nothing you give me is going to be enough. You can give me a free home, free electric bill paid, no electric bill, no utilities, no gas bill, a free car, all gas paid, expenses, and I'm still not going to be happy because I am a good looking guy. But we do badly need welfare reform. You're telling me most people don't want to be on food stamps? Of course shit. My uncle, who was a hard worker all his life, when he got on unemployment, his wife had to jolt him to get him back on the ball again. So it does make sorry people out of you when you attach welfare with no responsibility. Consistently. But when you start giving people welfare with no responsibilities attached, you may as well open the door of the jail cell and, tell, and set them free to rob with too much time on their hand and not a mind is the devil's workshop. So they say it's true. We need welfare reform that puts the blue collar working man back on top of the game. Because middle class America, white middle class America, uh-huh. Okay, sorry. They know me. They're friends. Okay. He's getting shafted. Yeah, oh, it's clean. No cuspids. White middle class America is at the bottom of the totem pole. And America's gonna go bankrupt. It's really funny to come to think of it. If the country goes bankrupt, just so long as I'm not wanting for anything. If only I had the good looks and longer arms and look young, I'd care. I'd give a damn. But till I'm set free, I don't give.